Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, to all the mothers. I hope you have a wonderful <laughs> Mother's Day, Mother's Day, and that you have been spoiled by your children already. Uh, I know there's a few of our people away to other churches because they seek to honor their their mom, and so they would attend church church with them and. Uh, and, and that's good and right. And, and moms, I just want to encourage you that uh, you have an incredible influence on your children, even though it may not always seem that way. Uh, just keep doing it uh, according to the Word of God and with the love and nurture that you would normally give your children, and it will have a huge impact one day on on your children. It, it will bear fruit, so, so be encouraged. Um, I was asked this morning if our message, which is just the next few verses in Philippians, or rather Philippians, Ephesians, uh, whether I had planned it so that on Mother's Sunday that we would reach this passage which deals with children and being obedient to their parents. And uh, I, I wish I could take credit for that, but that is not, I'm not able to, to plan that well. Uh, but I mean, uh, most of us, uh, um, we need to be reminded regularly that our spiritual walk, our walk of faith, uh, is very much dependent on the Holy Spirit indwelling us, the Holy Spirit empowering us, the Holy Spirit leading us. And it's the Holy Spirit that, of course, testify to our spirit uh, that we are a son or a daughter uh, of God. And uh, Romans 8, just a, a, a couple of chapters before what we read this morning, uh, we read that it is all those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Uh, and, of course, our passage in Ephesians, we've been looking at the household codes, uh, the household rules, so to speak, and, and what are the roles and the functions of different members within a household. And we've looked at, at wives. We need to have holy wives in order to have a family God's way. We, it requires holy wives. It requires a holy husband. And this morning we'll find out that it also requires holy children. And all of these are, of course, a subset or a further explanation of what we've read at the end, or not the end, the middle of chapter 5, where the command is in verse 8, that we should not be drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And being filled with the Spirit, you may remember, is, is that we are yielding ourselves up to the Spirit's control, that we are walking in obedience with the Holy Spirit. And then it went on and it described for us the, the, the outflow of someone who is filled with the Spirit, that they would be speaking uh, with psalms, uh, hymns and spiritual songs, and they would be giving thanks to the Lord, and they would be subject to one another. And, and that is that mutual submission. And then he went on and he described different relationships, different sets of relationships within the household, the wife and the husband, the marriage relationship, and each one's role and uh, how they are to uh, fulfill that by being filled with the Spirit and being in submission wife to the husbands, and now he brings us to this next set of, of uh, relationships, which is between parents and their children. And so we are in Ephesians chapter 6, so let me read that passage for us. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, we hope to cover this morning. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Let me pray for us before we jump into that passage. Father, we come to you, Lord, uh, uh, just uh, with hearts full of gratitude, knowing that you love us, Lord, knowing that you have saved us, knowing that you have poured your spirit 
in us, Lord, that you indwell us, that, that uh, you strengthen us and lead us. Uh, Lord, and we, we come and acknowledge, Lord, that without your Spirit uh, opening the eyes of our hearts, without your Spirit enlightening our minds, Lord, that your Word would be veiled to us. But thanks be to God that you have saved us, that you have regenerated us and made us new, Lord, so that we may understand. And Father, I pray for those who may be among us who have not yet experienced your grace, your saving grace, Lord, that even this morning, through this, uh, what would seem to be an unlikely message, Lord, that your spirit would work on them and bring them to salvation and faith in Christ alone. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we, we find this next s subset of rules re regarding our children. So uh, for, a, for a family, God's way, we need to have holy children. And holy children, I would like to show us this morning, uh, are children who are different. They are distinct, as we've said. Uh, they, they, they are marked out by an elevated action, by, or call it holy action. They are to be marked by a holy attitude, and then also that they would be or experience a whole life or a holy life. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit of a slave to to sort of rhyming there, but uh, let's first of all look at, at verse 1 and uh, the holy action that should characterize children. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for that is right. And, and I want to just look at that verse and, and through, through answering it, um, through answering th four questions. The first one is, is who is responsible to who basically is this addressed? What is required? How should it be rendered? And why should we respond to it? And so first, let's just, let us look at who is responsible. And it's pretty clear that this command is directly addressed to children. Children are responsible to obey this command. Now, the word children... In, a, in, a, in its broadest application would be anyone who has been born of a mother and father. And I would guess that would be, uh, yeah, no, that's everybody. Uh, uh, but yeah, we are, all, we are all a child of someone else. Uh, and in the Bible, when, when the word children is used, it, is, it is usually has relationship, the relationship in mind rather than the age of the individual. So we would talk about the children of Israel or the children of, of uh, 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 yeah, some specific individual. Uh, and so it's not so much the age that is in mind, but the relationship. And so here, children in our context would be those that would still be living with their parents. Those who have not left home yet. Remember last week we, we talked about uh, children, when, when you form your own family unit, you leave your mother and father and cleave to your wife. Now, this would, this, this, um, at that stage, your relationship with your parents changed, but at this stage, you still um, children who are basically living under the authority and, and, and under the care of their parents. And they are in the process of, of learning and, and, and growing and, and presumably are old enough to understand who God is and what their relationship to Him should be. And that is that they should obey Him. And so the command is children, obey God. And so if I can address the children directly as children... God says, obey your parents. And I can see all the eye contact is <laughs> lost. Uh, but children are obey your parents. And, and uh, this, of course, does not happen naturally. Our kids are not born obedient. Uh, and so this command has also direct implications to us as parents. Children are to obey, and parents are to teach children to obey. 
And I know we have a number of first-time parents uh, here with us, and, and I'm sh- maybe you have entertained the thought that, you know what, my little one is going to be different. That I am sure that my little bundle of joy would always obey me. And after, that may be while you were pregnant, uh, certainly afterwards, you have uh, discovered that your little precious joy is totally depraved. They are little sinful creatures. They have a rebellious streak in them. And they are not naturally obedient. And so, and I am 100% convinced that none of you had to teach your children to be disobedient. I can't imagine you saying to your little boy or girl, all right, next time when mommy tells you to share with your friends, what I want you to do this time is not to do that, okay? Just eat all the lollies. Just keep them for yourself. I am convinced that that has never happened. Why? Because they are, we are sinful by nature. We are selfish by nature. And that is, of course, confirmed in Scripture. Psalm 51.5, David wrote that we are brought forth in iniquity and conceived in sin. Uh, Even in Ephesians, early on in chapter 2, we read that uh, those who are not saved, we are sons of of disobedience. Colossians tells us we are children of disobedience and as such we are by nature children of wrath. We are born with this disobedient rebellious streak within us and we are corrupt to the core. All men are born totally depraved. Even that sweet little one that you love so much. But just on a theological side note, some people reject total depravity because they confuse total depravity with utter depravity. Total depravity means that we are affected by sin. Our our fallen nature affects every part of our being. That is total depravity. But it does not mean that you can be as sinful or as bad as you can be. That would be utter depravity. So if you are utterly depraved, you are as bad as is humanly possible to be. Total depravity just means that every part of your being has been affected by sin. And so that's what I mean, that we are all born sinful, we are all all born totally depraved. Psalm 58.3 tells us, The wicked are estranged from the womb. These who speak lies go astray from birth. And so our children are born totally depraved, they are born disobedient, and that comes naturally or natural to them. Uh, And so this command has implications to parents. And so mom and dad, you have to teach your children to obey. You have to teach them what is expected of them. And then you are to show them that there are consequences when they are disobedient. And and we'll talk more about this next week. But just... uh, to give you, uh, to make this point in this sermon, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, we children, parents are commanded to teach uh, the ways of the Lord to their children. You shall teach them diligently, verse 7 reads, to your sons, and you shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And that does not really leave much time for anything else. And uh, that's what you have discovered, that parenting is hard. Parenting is a full-time job. You have to constantly instruct your children, constantly train them, constantly discipline them. And that starts when they are still very, very young. And so I want to encourage you to use every opportunity to show them between what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. And then tell them why. 
because of God. You have to bring God into it. Remember that your authority is, in a sense, delegated authority. You are you have been given children so that you may raise them for him in the ways of the Lord. And so you need to, to use your authority uh, to raise this gift for him and uh, within the bounds that he sets up for us. And it's a constant task. And uh, in the book of Proverbs, and that will be a good uh, book to read, one of the wisdom uh, books where King Solomon, the wisest king who ever walked this earth, or earthly king, uh, repeatedly calls his children to listen to him, to follow him, to obey him. And he would set out th what is required. He would tell them what the blessings are associated with obeying this. And he would also tell them the consequences. And so that first probably eight or nine chapters of Proverbs is just replete with, with, with uh, uh, calls to, to children to hear your father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Proverbs 1, 8, Proverbs 2, 1. My son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you. Chapter 3. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Chapter 4. Hear, O son, the instruction of a father, and give attention that you may gain understanding. For I give you sound teaching. Do not abandon my instruction. And so it goes on and on and on. And every time after he's, 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 he's appealed to that, his children to listen to him, to obey him, he then gives them instruction as to what they should follow. Uh, and so first of all, we see who is responsible to obey this command. Well, it's primarily children. It's directed to children. But at the same time, it has implications for parents uh, that you have a responsibility to teach your children obedience and what is required that's obvious obedience is required it's it's not difficult to understand uh, it may be difficult to do it may be difficult to teach or instruct but it's not difficult to understand god requires children to obey to obey them. It's a, it's a strong word. It's, of course, a much stronger word that's been used previously when the wives, for instance, were instructed, where it says, wives, be submissive to your husbands. Here, there is no room for argument. There is no room to maneuver as you obey your parents. It is a strong command. It's a clear command. It's a direct command. And it demands compliance. Obedience is actually a compound word, and, and it literally means to be placed under the instruction of someone over you. And so in biblical times, uh, obedient children, that, that was the expected norm. That was, that was the, what everybody uh, thought should happen and, and expected to happen. And if children were not obedient, then we read that uh, that is a sign of a depraved mind. In fact, Romans 1, we read that uh, those who did not acknowledge God, God give over to a depraved mind. And then it goes on and lists these Horrible sins, unrighteousness, wickedness. These are being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil. And then all of a sudden, disobedient to parents. It's right in there. With all those other horrible sins, God sees a disobedient child in the same light. It is also against his commandment. And when you are uh, willful and persistent in disobeying your parent, then in, in effect you are rejecting God's commands, you are rejecting his words, you are rejecting his way for how the family is to operate, how the family is structured. 
And you know that the relationship between a parent and their child influences really all other relationships. If your child does not learn to relate to you in an obedient, respectful way, if they are rebellious, if they are disrespectful, if they are disobedient, then you know what? They will be rebellious, they will be disrespectful, they will be disobedient to other forms of authorities and in other relationships. If you have not learned to obey your parents and respect them, you will not respect others. That is essentially what we see around us. Much of our society today and the things that we see in our society can, I think, be traced back to a failure of how the family should operate. And of course, there are many forces that's trying to destroy marriage, destroy family, destroy our children, and in fact, therefore, destroy society. Which, of course, then again requires increased policing, more laws, more money to enforce that, and ultimately less freedom for everybody else. But it can be traced back to this one fundamental principle, is how the family operates. Um, I mean, we can see disrespect and violence against authority figures like the police, like teachers, uh, nowadays even doctors and nurses and hospitals experience uh, the brunt of disrespectful, rebellious behavior, uh, destructive behavior, vandalism, violence, gang involvement, unsocial behavior, criminal activity, uh, are used out on the streets doing when they should be at home. Uh, all the juvenile detention centers and jails are filled with people who were never properly taught by their parents or obeyed their parents, at least not in a loving, edifying Christian manner. And so parents uh, need to teach their children obedience. And if, if you teach them obedience in this minor things with, 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 which is of really, in the bigger schemes of things, of little consequence, then they would be also willing to submit and obey authority uh, figures when, in fact, rebelling against that could be far more devastating and life-changing results or consequences because they have not. It starts at the home. It starts in that relationship. Um, but please don't be disheartened, don't give up, persevere. Even when all those around you disapprove, even if the world disapprove of that. Uh, in some ways, disobedience and rebellion is seen as a virtue. But it is a sign of a depraved mind we have seen, and it is a sign of evil which will characterize the last days in 2 Timothy 3, 2, we read that this would be a sign of the evil that characterizes the last days. Again, he names these things, and then in the middle of it, disobedient to parents. He says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness although they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. And so disobedience to parents, are, again, are viewed by God as, as serious. It is evil. And so parents, you need to know who your children's friends are. You need to be involved there. It says here, avoid such men as these. Avoid contact with those who are rebellious and disrespectful. 
It says, 1 Corinthians 15.33 reminds us that bad company corrupts good morals. And so obedience is required at home. And obedience brings blessing. It brings blessing. And we, we, we have to look to the Lord for, for our example in this, who was perfect in obedience. We read in Philippians 2.8 that Christ emptied himself and took upon himself flesh. And as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, even to the obedience to the point of death. And what was the end result? Therefore, he was highly exalted. And to him was given a name that is above every other name. So Christ, in Hebrews we, are, we, we read that he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And so Christ willingly submitted himself and were perfectly obedient to his heavenly father. And ultimately resulted in great blessing. But not only that, even for us, he's even our example in everyday life. Uh, with our children. Uh, now, Scripture does not record much of, of Jesus' early life, uh, but in Luke 2, we, we get a little bit of a glimpse. Here, Jesus was about 12 years old, and they would go to, the, to Jerusalem for the fe Passover feast. And it happened that after the feast, uh, while Joseph and Mary uh, return, started their return journey, Jesus uh, stayed behind in Jerusalem. And uh, when they realized that he was not among them, he started looking for him and finally went back to Jerusalem and they found him in the temple arguing with some of the teachers or debating with the teachers. Uh, and they were amazed at him and, and he seemed to be totally unfazed by that and even a little bit perplexed that his parents did not know that he should be about the business of his father or his heavenly father. But yet it says there that he submitted to them and continued in subjection or submission to them. And verse 52 of Luke 2, we read, And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And this verse in, in uh, Luke 2 gives us some rich pickings uh, in regards to the blessings that is available to children when you obey your parents. Uh, the blessing of growing in wisdom, we see. Because children, regardless of what you may think, that you do not have the experience of your parents. You do not have the frame of reference of your parents. You do not have the knowledge. You do not know what they know. Know about what is good and what is evil, what is good and what is right, what is best and what is bad. And so you need to learn from them. You need to follow their instructions. You need to obey them and you will grow in wisdom. Wisdom, of course, is the, the ability to apply what you know to life. And so when you are confronted with a set of circumstances, ask your parents. They will give you wisdom to navigate that. And then follow that advice. I think that is the... The curse of our modern days is that everybody knows or does what is right in their own eyes. And that's not only in families. <laughs> but you may have the blessing of growing in wisdom by obeying your parents. It says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. And so there's a, there's a blessing of growing in stature. And this refers to basically to bodily maturity. A child is dependent on the care of his parents to provide for him, to protect him. And they can't do it by themselves. And if left to their, their own devices, they would not eat healthily. They would not wash themselves uh, or their clothes or tidy up their rooms. Uh, and so they need to obey their parents. So eat your greens, brush your teeth, wash behind your ears, because these things are good for you. These things will make sure that you grow up and not become ill and 
perish. <laughs> you can also grow, and I'll first do this one, grow in favor with men. If you are obedient to your parents and you listen to them, you follow their instructions, you would grow in favor with others because what your parents will teach you is social skills that you need in life. Say please. Say thank you. Simple things like that. How to act and be considerate of others. Teach your children to be civil with manners, good manners, because that will make them grow in favor with men. Uh, you may have had an experience of, of uh, someone's children coming around to you, and you know what? You dread that moment because they are little selfish brats. <laughs> And you want your children to behave properly so that they would grow in favor with others. Uh, that will not only, while they're young, that will stand them in good stem throughout life. How to interact with others. Not to be totally self-absorbed. And also, there's a blessing of growing in favor with God. Um, of course, we, we've heard this morning that we are all born uh, sinful and depraved. And that we don't naturally do what is right and good and pleasing to the Lord. Uh, so that needs to be taught. Uh, and when we do that, that's when God is pleased with us. That is when, when God's favor rests upon us, as we'll see in a moment. And so don't give up in teaching your children from a biblical perspective. Help them see why that you have been given this responsibility by God to raise them up. Bring God into the picture often. That the reason why you have to obey is because I'm your mom and your dad and the Lord said you should obey me because He wants me to raise you as best as I can. That doesn't mean that parents are always going to get it right. But there's this terrible warning in Scripture for those who refuse to listen. And it's in, it's in Proverbs, in the context of Solomon exhorting his children to listen to him. And he, and, he, and he writes here from verse 20 and following, uh, speaking of wisdom, which is the wisdom of God. And wisdom here is personified as a, as a woman in this, in this text. And it says, wisdom shouts out in the streets. She lifts up her voice in the square. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she utters her sayings. How long, O oh naive ones, will you love being simple-minded? And scoffers delight themselves in scoffing, and fools hate knowledge. Turn to my reproof. So when mom and dad reproves you, listen to that. Change your ways. I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. But because I called and you refused, I stretch out my hand and no one paid attention. And you neglected all my counsel and did not want my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your dread comes. And when your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not accept my counsel. They spurned all my reproof. So they will, shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be satiated within their own devices. 
For the waywardness of the naive will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But he who listens to me shall live securely and will eat and uh, will be at ease rather from the dread of evil. And that text just reminds us that they listen and grow while you have sound instruction. Because there may come a time when you find yourself in a situation where you require wisdom and it will not be available to you. And so children, obey your parents because the cost of rebelling against them is like rebelling against God. And parents, teach your children to obey. So that is what is required. So we've looked at who is responsible, what is required, and now how is it rendered? That is how and why obedience is to be rendered. This verse tells us it's to be rendered in the Lord, uh, in the sphere of pleasing the Lord. And so it's, it's in fact an act of worship to God. That's what it means. It means that if you are ple- it will be pleasing and honoring to God if you obey your parents. We've pointed out that uh, this falls in the section of being spirit-filled, being submissive. And so when children obey their parents, in a sense, they are obeying the Lord. Because He gave them to your parents, He gave you to your parents, and He placed them over you. And so accept this grace and obey them for His sake as an act of worshiping Him. And so obedience is is an act of worship, but obedience is also uh, in the Lord also defines or delineate um, the area in which obedience should take place. And that is uh, defined and delineated by the Word of God. So if a parent asks their child to do something that is sinful or against the Word of God, then the child has to resist. The child has to refuse to do that and will probably have to bear the consequences of their resistance. I mean, there are other examples of that in the Old Testament. Daniel, who refused to obey a direct uh, command by the king not to pray, and yet he was going to obey God and not the earthly king. The apostles were hauled before the religious leaders and were uh, commanded not to preach Christ, to which they answer, we must obey God rather than man. So there may be situations, and oftentimes it is in situations where a child may be brought up in a house where the child may be in the Lord, the child may be saved, but the parents are not or not yet. And so in those cases, when a child refused to obey, refused to heal, they will most likely have to pay the consequences or experience the consequences. Like Daniel, who was cast in the lion's den, like the apostles who were flogged for their disobedience to the religious leaders. But we have to remember that Matthew 10, 37 Jesus said, he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. The Lord has to come first. Before family, before friends, before mom and dad, before your children if you're a parent. You have to Put the Lord first and not yield to sinful ways or out of fear of upsetting family, parents even. And so it's to be rendered in the sphere of pleasing the Lord and in the specifics of the Word of God. And why should we obey? The last part of that verse says, for this is right. Right. 
I love that. It's just, it's just the Lord says, that's how it is. It, is. it is right. And it is right because he says it is right. And he is absolutely, perfectly righteous in all his ways. He is the standard of righteousness. And so he decrees that it is right in his eyes for children to obey their parents. And this, in one sense, this is an appeal wider than, than, uh, than, than Scripture. It, it appeals to, to a man's consciousness. We know that God placed within a man uh, the knowledge or the law of, of, his, of knowing right and wrong, uh, what we would call our conscience. And children know when they are disobedient. They know it is wrong. That is a presupposition that you can assume. And so here it's called obey your parents because it's the right thing to do because God says so. And so that is the action, what, what defines or marks out a holy child is one who has been raised, in a sense, in a ho with a holy mother and a holy father, um, of which we will say more next week. Um, and so holy action would be obedience and a holy attitude, verse 2, is to honor your father and mother. And so Paul underscores this command to children to obey them by pointing back to the Ten Commandments, which we have in uh, Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. And honor, again, is a, is a very broad term. It is very similar to, to fear the Lord. Uh, it, is, it covers a wide range of implications. And it's so to honor your mother and father is certainly uh, means to respect them, to treat them with reverence and, and honor, and to look up to them, to, to appreciate them. And so how, how does the Bible describe that? How do we honor our parents? Well, again, go back to the previous verse. It is to obey them. Uh, but it is obey them not merely externally. Uh, you, you've probably seen this when your child does what you ask him to do or her to do. But Man, the attitude stinks. They are just brooding with anger, maybe, or, or resentment, or kicking or screaming. They would do it because they don't like the consequences, maybe. But, man, they show absolute disrespect in how they obey. Or they obey only after you get worked up and frustrated. So they wait. They will wait. And you would tell them, go and clean your room. And they would keep playing on their games until out of exasperation, you and anger, and you better go and clean your room. Oh, that action is dishonoring to a parent. And parents, you may be cultivating that if you allow that. And so make sure your child understand what is required of them, when it is required of them, and then make sure that they do it when you want them to do it. So make sure your instruction, and we'll come back to that next week again, is clear so that your children would learn to honor you. Uh, and there are numerous applications to that. It is anything from interrupting you when you are talking. Uh, all of those things are, are disrespectful, not only to the parent, but to whoever is being talked to, to. And God is very serious about this command, about honoring your parents. In Deuteronomy 21, it says that if a man has a stubborn or rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him and will not even listen to them, then his mother and father shall 
shall seize him and bring him to the elders of the city at the gateway of his hometown. And they shall say to the elders of the city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And then all the men of the city shall stone him to death. So you shall remove the evil from your midst. And all Israel will hear of it and fear. I think the Lord is serious about this. Maybe if your parents walk around with a pouch full of stones, then <laughs> that will help sometimes. But uh, no, I mean, uh, we need to, again, this does not come naturally. This does not come by itself. Parents, it's your responsibility to, to help your children, to honor you. And so honor is, is the reverence and respect that children shows you, but it's also seen in the care and consideration that they have for you. Maybe not when they are young, but when they are older. And when you are older and you have come to a point in life where you are not as strong and as vigorous as you used to be, and you are now in need of, of care and of help and protection. And so that is when a, 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 a child, so our responsibility as a child continues in honoring our parents when they have a need, when they may be old and cannot care for themselves anymore. And so that is the holy attitude that children should have. They should have holy action. They should have a holy attitude and it will lead to a holy or a wholesome or a full and blessed life. Uh, the next part of that verse says, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And so it's the, the fifth commandment, on the, in, the, in the Ten Commandments the Lord has given is to honor your father and mother. It's the first one listed on the table that relates to relationship, horizontal relationships. The first table of the Ten Commandments relates to our relationship with God. The second table with, with six commandments is with our relationship to our neighbor. And the first one that is listed is honor your father and mother. And, and Jesus actually repeated that. We read it five times in the Gospels. Now, some of them are duplicate, but five references in the in the gospel, Jesus made to this very command to honor your father and mother. So whatever was true back in the Mosaic law is true according to Christ in our day and our time. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And Deuteronomy 5.16 tells us, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well with you on the land which the Lord your God gives you. And Paul sort of assures us because he quotes this verse and then he Interpret that for us under the inspiration of the Spirit because the promises in the Old Testament was specifically addressed to the Israelites and relates to their land, the land that God has promised them. But here in our text, it just says that you may live long on the earth. And so the promise for, for you, if you obey your parents, if you honor your father and mother, then you will first of all experience a, a full life, a blessed life, a rich life. And you may well experience a long life, that you may live long on the earth. And I'm sure that some of you may say, you know what, I know someone who was very respectful to their parents and honoring them, and, and they did not live long. Uh, granted, I'm, I'm sure that, would, that can be the case. But like all of God's promises, it has to be received by faith. We act in obedience to God because we believe Him and we believe His ways to be best and right. And so 
for example, just as our prayers, I'm sure all of you have pray, prayed and not all your prayers have been answered. And prayer is, the Lord, the scripture tells us that if we pray with willful, unrepented sin in our hearts, he will not hear us. Psalm 66, 18 tells us, in regard, if I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Or if we uh, pray with an unforgiving heart, with unforgiveness in our heart. Matthew 6, 15. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And that is, of course, given to us in the context of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and James 4, 3 tells us, when we pray with corrupt motives... You ask and you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. And so the same is true for this command, that we need to obey this command in faith, believing this promise by faith, access this promise by faith, trusting God, but making sure that we are walking in His ways with the right motives. with a sincere faith. And so this morning, on Mother's Day, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, because this is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Let me pray for us. Father, we come to you, Lord, and just give you thanks that your word is, is truth. Lord, thank you for reminding us again of this basic, basic truth that you require us to, to follow. Lord, a, a truth that promises us a full life, a blessed life, a long life. Lord, when we obey our parents, when we honor them, when we respect them. And Father, so I pray for every child here, Lord, that you would, through your Spirit, convict them, Lord, of their actions, of their attitude. Lord, if they are contrary to your word, and that you would bring them, Lord, to repentance, that they would turn away from that waywardness, Lord, and willingly obey their parents. And Lord, I pray for us as parents that we would, Lord, first of all, look to you, Lord, that we would cling to you. But Lord, whenever your word instruct us and show us that, that we have a responsibility over others, that we have to lead and to guide others, Lord. That's such a weighty command, Lord. One that we sometimes so easily shrug off. Lord, help us as parents to yet again come to you, Lord, and, and realize how urgent it is, Lord, how great a need it is, especially in the times that we live, Lord, that we would help our children, uh, teach them to be obedient in the little things, Lord, so that they would also be obedient in the big things, that they would be honoring and respectful to us, uh, their parents, so that they would learn to be honoring and respectful to others as well. And Lord, we need your help in that. And for that we ask now in Jesus' name. Amen.